it's a sacrifice worth fighting because in a sport so physical, you actually don't lose time on your career by not playing. Oh, that's interesting. Just like Le'Veon Bell. This ain't baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while you're going to short-term miss that salary, you still have the ability and you still have the help. So when and if the issue is resolved, you go back to your regularly scheduled program. Now, there are going to be some people that become collateral damage that the league want to just use as an example. Like, oh, okay, number 48, man, you think you want to be a guy to sit out? We're going to cut you. It's going to mm-hmm. be some of those. Sure, rookies and stuff. You know what I mean? You just get drafted in the league and all of a sudden you're not playing. But for the greater good of the game, I've stood on the table for NFL players. Richard Sherman has come on our program oh, and echoed wait, wait, this wait. as well. Richard Sherman was on the program? Yes, indeed. Let's let's check that out. If we want to, as an as a NFL and as a union, want to get anything done, then players got to be willing to strike. You know, I think that's... The, the, the thing that guys need to 100% realize is you're going to have to miss games. You're going to have to lose some money if you're willing to make the point because that's how M- MLB and NBA got it done. So I think guys need to, to, to reevaluate how they look at contracts and how they look at longevity and, and, and things of that nature because NBA players like, you know, KD and, and uh, LeBron are sitting there taking two-year deals like it's nothing. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, I'll take a two-year deal because I'm going to wait for the salary cap to increase and, and get another bite at the apple. In our sport, they won't do it. Interesting. So here we are. We're two years closer to the collective bargaining agreement ending, and it becomes a reality. So my question for you is, what do you think they should be asking for in these negotiations? So off the top of my head, because you know I don't write anything, I don't prepare at all, I'm going to give you a couple of things that's really important for me to see happen as it relates to the NFL players in the next collective bargaining agreement. I'll just call these reasons that are worth striking. Mm Mm-hmm. Number one, guarantee contracts. Like, it's 2019. NFL players, those deals are basically written on toilet paper. I know you get a guarantee, but after that, you could be released. I look no further than, I'll never forget this. I looked down at the paper and saw Donovan McNabb, who had just went to the NFC Championship game five years in a row, led his team to the Super Bowl, got traded to the Washington football team. And all of a sudden, they were struggling. And I looked down, wait a minute, they just gave him an $84 million contract? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, it's just Monopoly money, okay? So that's the number one thing. The second thing is slowly start to fight for the marijuana policy. Mm-hmm. For those who haven't been paying attention, have you ever seen a baseball player? Have you ever seen somebody in NASCAR? Have you ever seen somebody in golf? Have you ever seen somebody in tennis? get punished for marijuana use? Don't forget hockey. Have you ever seen somebody get punished for marijuana use? No. It only happens in the sports that just happen to be predominantly black. They test for it in other sports. But they don't, I said punish. Yep. Okay. In the NFL and the NBA, these are both two sports that should try to fight for that. Another thing that the NFL should try to fight for, that you can't enter the draft until you're three years removed from your high school class. Maybe two years, or maybe you just get a chance to choose and when you want. Now you got people just not playing the end of their college careers. Just not playing. Correct. So those are a couple of things that stand out to me that if they want to grow their game and give the players a level of autonomy that they deserve, the only way you get it is to hit the owners and the fans and the media and fantasy football owners and betters not it is legal in the pockets. You think there was an uproar when Colin Kaepernick took a knee? Imagine if NFL players decided we ain't playing this. We're Sunday. not playing. So what are you gonna do about it? It's interesting. Now, question for you is this is Jamora Smith writes this email. And I believe that part of the reasons he writes this email is because he's very concerned about the players' finances, make sure they're saving some of their money and putting a fund together for the younger players. That's a true, genuine concern of his. There's also whether it's zero percent or one hundred percent, just part of the negotiations. Just, 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 just so we talk about it, and the people who work for the NFL, they see this information, they see this news story. How much do you think that balance is? Ninety percent of players, David Jacoby, spend one hundred percent of their first contract. You're getting it for the first time. <laughs> sure, 
And you think it's going to last forever, too, because when you're 23, you think you're going to play for 15 years. You just said two different things that are important. Number one, you think it's going to last forever. Number two, you're betting on yourself. Yeah. I'm going to be able to do this. Look at me. I'm getting buckets. I'll be able to yeah. do this for a while. Of course. And you're purchasing everything for the first time. Mom's house, mom's car, mm. dad's car, your house. I mean, that's true. Like, there's some benchmarks, things that you need to do only once. Yeah. You have to do them in you, your first you're buying, contract. You're buying sure. everything for the first time. And then you're also making mistakes that you realize, you know what? I don't need the biggest rims. I don't need yeah. the biggest tires. Maybe maybe a record, maybe my homeboy's record label wasn't the best thing to invest yeah, in. Yeah, I don't necessarily need to do a bad investment. Yeah. So there's a large portion of football players based on the dynamics of the draft. See, the NBA, only the first round is guaranteed, just like the NFL. But the NBA only has two rounds. The NFL has seven rounds. Okay, so you have an influx of players each year coming into the league that are still on their first deals, still on their rookie deals. And I would think that that's a maybe just the dynamics that probably 33% of the game, mm -hmm. of the game. You can't finance all of those people, and all of those people don't want to be without checks. So that becomes the haves and the have-nots that has prevented NFL players from striking. Now, if you have your high net worth players say, okay, I'm going to help put aside a level of, of finance so that these guys can still be okay. Which they do. There's a fund that they contribute to in these scenarios. In the event of a strike. And then when we all get whole, everybody get reimbursed. That should be the system that they're trying to do. And I think that's why DeMorris is now sending out that email to start planting that seed that he hopes is going to become a harvest.